I hope this pisses you off because mm. I'm telling you to annoy you that you're sitting there struggling to pay your bills. There are people out there making so much money you couldn't possibly fathom who have anything they want all of the time. And you may sit there and go, oh, but they're miserable. A lot of them aren't. Trust me, they're having a great time. So you need to make a bunch more money because there's money everywhere. I'd look at a beautiful woman and go, I can go on a date with her and she's absolutely gorgeous and perhaps we'll fall in love and it'll be great. But you know what? I'd rather work. I just want to conquer the earth. I don't care about anything else. So you need to start identifying how your money is taken from you. Mm. Because once you identify how your money is taken from you, you can start to actually intelligently think about how you can take money from other people. The only time being a man ever is good is if you become an exceptional man. He understood, be near the money. I have no money, yeah. money's over there. Well, let me get closer to it. <laughs> like, no point staying over here on my fucking own. Let me at least get closer to it. That was a 17 year old kid. This is the 60 best minutes of Andrew Tate, part one. I selected only those tips and ideas that can really be applied in life. So enjoy. Money for us is a tool to shape the world. And, and I think that's what a lot of people also don't understand about being rich. You don't want to be rich. You want to be powerful. That's what really is going to satisfy you in your soul. Mm -hmm. It's the power. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the, I can afford this, that. That's nice for a while. But mm -hmm. really what makes you happy is there's 60 of these Bugattis on earth. Everyone wants one. Mm -hmm. Who gets one? I do. Because you can't have one. That's, that's mm -hmm. the fun of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's power you're truly chasing. And if you want to be powerful, you can't be scared to invest money and spend money. A lot of people at home, if they want to make more money, need to invest in themselves. Yeah. They invest in themselves. And they're, they, maybe they've been taught, well, if I just save, if I just save. Let me say to everyone here at home, if you are saving less than 10 grand a month and you're just saving, saving, your chance of being rich is fucking zero. Mm. You need to go and do something else and make more. Invest in yourself, get knowledge, pay attention to mentors, start another business, open something. You need to do something because you're not going to save your way to the top. The average person at home, you're not earning enough to ever save. If you never save 100% of your wage, mm. you're still going to be broke. Mm. You have to get to a level of earning. Uh, when, I, when I found out about the, the, I just learned about how they print money. I literally could not believe Oh yeah, it. money's not real. For three days, I'm sitting around, so I'm like, what the fuck is this? So they could just print this shit? Money is not real. It's not real. They just print it. It's not real. Fair. Please continue. Yeah, so, so money's not real. And I say that to people. And they so go, it's not mean? about money. No, it's not about money. So what's it about? It's about power and control. Yeah. So I've been from the absolute bottom to the absolute top. I've seen it all. And once you get past a certain level of wealth, once you get past Same. a certain level of money, yeah, but then you, re then you understand what money is, right? So we say about money not being real. Money is not real from a governmental perspective because they just print it. It's nothing. But money is truthfully the stored time and energy of other people. If you have money, you have stored time and energy of other humans. Because people are hourly rates. That's right. Because I can take that money and make someone else use their time and energy for X thing. So let's look at even American slavery, the slavery that most Americans understand. You're going to work for me. I'm going to give you a house and I'm going to give you food. And you're going to stay here and you're going to work. Slavery is abolished. So now what do we do? You're going to work for me. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you some money. And that money is enough to only buy you a house and some food. We've just put money in the middle. Now, if I can make you do whatever I want for money and I can print as much money as I want, you're my slave. Because I can print it from the sky and you need it to live. So you are my slave, money's not real. So I have all of this money, I have the stored time and energy of other humans. And once you get past a certain level of wealth, you understand, which ties back to COVID, that you're not interested in money, what you're interested in is people. It's always been about having good people around you. You want a beautiful, doting, loving woman who's obsessed with you. You want good brothers who will stand by you and make you motivated. You want bodyguards who are going to protect you. You want, you want people. And then you want to look at it further down the rabbit hole. You want to get more sinister. If you've been born into a lineage or a dynasty or the people who control the world, you want people, you want robot people. You don't want to be spoken to disrespectfully. In your empire, in your podcast empire, right? You now have a podcast. Would you allow a member of staff to come along and say, this is bullshit. I don't like how you do this. This is shit. I don't, you're shit. Or no. would you fire him? I don't know if I would fire them. I would tr first try to teach them how to behave. And if they didn't listen, they're out. Or, absolutely. So let's imagine you ran a country. So, okay. All right. You want to, let's imagine you ran the world. So I say this to people. I say for the next two weeks, every time you spend money, even if it's a pound, write down how they got it from you. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, all right, cool. You're walking down the street. You go into Starbucks, you buy a coffee. Why did they take your money? Well, I wanted coffee. Yeah, but how? Okay, you wanted coffee, right? Cool. Did you only want a coffee because you saw Starbucks or did you want a coffee beforehand? Why did you want their coffee and not another coffee? Did you buy a cake as well? Why did you buy a cake? All right, cool. So now you identified how they took your money. Then realize how they could have took more of your money. You bought a cake, but you didn't buy a sandwich. Why? The sandwiches weren't on display or they looked cold or they looked rubbish. Or the woman who was serving me was old and ugly. Maybe she was a young cutie and talked to me about bologna sandwiches or would have bought one. 
right? So you need to start identifying how your money is taken from you. Mm. Because once you identify how your money is taken from you, you can start to actually intelligently think about how you can take money from other people. I find it amazing when people say they don't have motivation. I have people come to me and say, I want to get rich. I don't have motivation. I want to work harder. I said, how can you not have motivation to get rich when somebody like me with a head start like mine is still working 18 hour days every single day, seven days a week without having a day off? I'm going to crush you. You don't stand a chance. I will beat you. And you're just going to sit there and perpetually lose because you can't find the motivation to crawl up out the mud and stay a bug until you end up in your 15-minute city getting your 17th injection like a dummy, like a useless eater. All I do is work. Nothing is fun. I don't have fun. You I don't even understand. Sports? I don't understand the concept of fun. The only sport I ever did was beating the shit out of people. Is that fun? By the way, hit the like button and follow my YouTube channel. The next episode with Elon Musk is coming. I wake up every day and I think, how do I make my life better? Nobody else wakes up each day and goes, how do I make Andrew Tate's life better? So if you're not the person who's waking up every day going, how do I improve my existence? Then nobody is. Mm. Nobody on the planet is mm. considering improving your one spin on earth. No one else cares. Nobody else cares. So if you don't care, then you're fucked. So you need to wake up and care. And it's amazing to me, like you're saying, how did I find my mentors? I just tried a bunch of them. Like when I had no money, I would try very hard to I'd listen to lots of different people or I try different things. And I wasn't, I wasn't scared mm -hmm. to invest in myself because I understand that, look, there, if he's taking time out of his life, then I need to reward him for it mm -hmm. financially. And I tried very hard and I listened and I paid attention and I was never lazy. I don't believe there's a person on the planet who pays attention tries their best, is never lazy, is on time, works hard, has a mentor, and is giving it his all, who isn't rich. I don't believe it. I think that if you do all those things, you're rich. And if you don't have any money, you're missing one of those key elements. Now you can fool yourself and you can fool everyone else and you can pretend you're doing them, but if you're truly honest with yourself, am I finding people who are trying to teach me what I wanna know and am I trying my best? And the answer is fucking no, every time. Just even being around people with money, it's just a good place to be. I'll give you an example. I was in Romania and I have the largest car collection probably in Romania. I have 28 supercars, everything you can name. And uh, I went to uh, a town called Cluj-Napoca. It's on the border of Hungary. And I drove there in my Chiron and I parked up and a kid came up and he said, hey, can I take some photos of your car? I have a car spotting page. I was like, yeah, whatever, cool. And he goes, uh, yeah, okay, I'll just be a few minutes at this. So he took a bunch of photos and he goes, and he come up to me and goes, hey, do you want the photos? And I was like, not really, I've already had foes. And he goes, oh yeah, okay. Um, well, if you want them, here's my email address. And I said to him, why do you do this? Like, you spend all day standing around taking photos of other people's cars. Is that not a waste of time? I thought it was a waste of time, but I was wrong. He goes, oh, well, I skipped school and I skipped college because I knew if I take pictures of expensive cars and, and email them to people, I'll, ha I'll have email addresses of the richest people in Romania. Yeah, smart. I was like, you're clever. I ended up hiring him. He works for me now. Yeah. I was like, you know, I like you. He got himself a full-time job that day. So he understood, be near the money. I have no money. Yeah. Money's over there. Well, let me get closer to it. <laughs> like, no point staying over here on my fucking own. Let me at least get closer to it. That was a 17 year old kid. Now he's making 10 grand a month in Romania for me. So like, at least being closer to it. So you're right. People should, even if they haven't got a penny in the world, should be going to these meetings about real estate, about investing, that especially if it's cheap, they should go. Just meet other people who at least have money. Have conversations about money. Talk about it. How are you going to get what you don't talk about? Okay. When I'm sitting there and saying to men, look, life as a man is shit. It's always been shit. It's never been good. When men wake up and say, I'm depressed and life is hard and I'm sad and I'm struggling right now, I say, okay, Throughout history, men have always struggled. Happiness is for children and women. Name a time in history it was better to be a man. Was it better to be a man in World War II? Yep. Was it better to be a man on the Titanic? Was it better to be a man in the Napoleonic Wars? Was it better to be a man when you were sitting in Vienna and the Mongol horde arrived, ready to decapitate any male and enslave all the females? When's it ever been good to be a man? Building the pyramids, was that fun? It's always sucked. The only time being a man ever is good is if you become an exceptional man, which is even something feminists admit because feminists sit and complain about men and say, well, men have this, men have that, but they're talking about 2% of men. They, Fascinating. They don't talk about all men. They say men have the best jobs. 2% of men have the best jobs. Most men carry trash. So you're talking crap. So everyone accepts that the best possible human experience that exists is the top 2% of men. Anything below that sucks as a man. You're better off being a chick. So what I say to men is, look, 
Life's hard. It's always going to be hard. It's always going to suck. It always has. The only way to get out is to become excellent and perform at a level where your echelon is so high that you get to live this brand new experience. You need to become strong and smart and interesting and charismatic. You need to become rich, powerful, well-known, connected. You need to do it. But can all men do that? No. So, okay. But I have to tell them the truth. When okay. people come along to me and say, my life's shit, and I look at them and go, yes. I think a lot of, a lot of the problem with people, especially in the world today, is they, they misunderstand the difference between a, a dream and a plan. Mm. And nothing good in your life is ever going to happen by accident. If you mm. see a guy in fantastic shape, you don't say, how'd you get in great shape? And he goes, it just oops, happened. oops, <laughs> I just fell. And it, no, he, he ate a specific mm. way. He trained a specific time. He did specific things for a specific outcome. And it's the same with finances. And most people who are broke, if you say, do you want to be rich? Yeah, I want to be rich. Mm. How are you going to get rich? One day I'll win the lottery. Yeah, dumb shit. <laughs> you, have no, you have no plan. <laughs> you have no plan whatsoever. No actionable steps. Mm. No, you're not doing things daily. You're just hoping some point in the future, God's going to just, just dump it on your doorstep. Mm. Guess what? It ain't going to fucking happen. Mm. And unless you have a plan, a specific plan, I'm sure you guys had a very, you had a plan and you worked hard to get to your points. I, I had a plan. Everything was like, okay, today we have to do day after day after day until you mm. get there. And this is what most people don't have because they're too arrogant or too lazy. I don't think it's stupid. I think most people, if you laid out a plan and they tried their very best and they were willing to learn, could do it. Mm. I don't think people are too stupid to make money. They're just too lazy or too arrogant to make money. That's the problem with people. A lot of people are obsessed with the idea of happiness. And especially as a man, I think that happiness can actually be a very destructive motivator. And when men sit and say, I wanna be happy, I wanna feel happy. To feel happy, a lot of the time, you're looking for temporary hedonism. To be happy, you want to get drunk or take drugs or do something stupid temporarily, and it's very short-lived. I think you should instead be looking as a man to say, I want to feel proud. If you choose pride over happiness, you're going to make decisions that you're proud of and that people around you are proud of, and it's going to be better, better for yourself and better for society and better for everyone who loves you, everyone you care about. If you're the kind of person who searches for happiness, whether male or female, in my experience, people who search for happiness end up doing hedonistic, temporary, stupid things. When I find men who search to feel proud of themselves, I want people to be proud of me and I want to be proud of myself and I want to be respected. Mm. They often delay happiness. They often go through very difficult things and build things which are beautiful or build things which are difficult to do. They often go to the other side of fear to feel that pride. I did it. I faced my fear. I did it. Yeah. So I think as a man searching for pride or searching to feel proud is a pretty positive mindset for masculine achievement. The reason I'm the luckiest man on earth is because God has given me endless building blocks to build a superhero. I, he's, he, he's given me endless power. He's given me endless motivation. What did we say? Yeah. He's given me endless. I have endless sources of power. I can sit here right now and recall events that will prevent me from sleeping for two to three days. That gives me a superpower that other men do not have. They want to go to sleep. They're tired. I, I can stop being tired for, for days at a time. I can just have a thought. I can remember. I can sit, close my eyes and use the power of my brain to vividly remember events. And I will not sleep for days. And when people come to me and say, oh, this happened, I'm really sad, or my heart broke, or this bad thing happened to me, I say, good, good. That's Thank right. the Lord that he's given you this endless source of motivation. You're wasting it. Yeah. That's your problem. But it's been given to you. Nitrous oxide has been given to you. You just have to use it in the correct way. So I'm the luckiest man in the world because uh, all the bad things that happened to me have given me all the building blocks to become the most fantastic man on the face of the planet. I don't ever sit and, and concern myself with, am I spending too much? Da -da. If I thought I was spending too much, I would simply find a way to make more money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people talk about efficiency as well. I've had people talk about working smart, not hard. That is true. But I believe that you need to, to fill your day with all of the hard work first. I think that working smart is a matter of being more efficient with all the time you yeah. should spend working. If you sit there and go, I want to work smart, not hard, so I work an hour a day. Well, then you're you're still lazy. Mm, you should yeah. work smart and hard and mm. do do 15 smart hours a day. That's mm. how you win. I was talking to a young guy the other day and he was 22, I think, and he caught a crypto pump. He made like $4 million in the last bull run. And now all the coins have gone down, whatever, whatever. He sold some, he has like one and a half million. He's like, oh yeah, so I'm waiting for the next pump. I was like, bro, the problem with you is you've now been ruined for life because you're 22, you made easy money, and you think that you don't have to ever do any serious work. You also have no skill. The problem is with the crypto pump, it doesn't teach you anything. You didn't learn sales, marketing, yeah. staff management, yeah. stress tolerance. You need that. See, nothing. He doesn't yeah. know how to do anything. Yeah. So he's just sitting there just gambling on shit coins, waiting for the next one to pump. And he's 22, and his ass is never going to want to get a real job, and he doesn't have any skills. So I think he's in a lot of trouble, truthfully. 
And I made, I made this clear to him. So it can be a detrimental thing. It can be a bad thing. But in terms of making money, it's certainly easier than it's ever been because we live in a global marketplace now. You mm. can reach the world and all you have to do is have a message worth making people listen to. And, and it truly is the abundance mindset is true. I remember when I was broke. When I was broke, I thought everyone was broke. You do. Because mm. I was broke. 100%. And then you get rich and you start thinking, shit, everyone has money. Mm. Every supercar I want is sold out. Every diamond watch I want is sold out. The private jet charters are full. The yachts are full. Like, as soon as you get rich, you start Who going, are all these people yeah, that got who, money? <laughs> who are they? I was just in Dubai and my houses are being built. They're going to be completed this year. I bought a bunch of them off plan. So I decided to rent and I rented a house on the Palm and it was 25000 a day, dollars, and I rented it. And I'm sitting there and the landlord comes and goes, I just got an offer for $35,000 a day, you need to leave. And I go, okay, well, I'll pay 40,000 a day. And then he came back and goes, the guy's offered 50,000 a day for a year. And I'm like, who am I even in a bidding war with? <laughs> yeah. And I just left. I was like, you know what? Take it, I'll get another one. But like, there's people out there with money like you couldn't fucking fathom. Mm. There is mm. so much money in the world. So it's, you do get to a level of wealth. Another time it hit me, I was at Monaco, I was sitting around. Uh, dinner in Monaco after it was on a car rally, funnily mm. enough. Mm. And there's like 10 of us. And I just looked around the table by coincidence and I saw everyone's wearing a nice watch. And I thought, when I was broke, the idea, if someone told me they had 30 or 40 grand in the mm. bank, I thought they were doing good. Mm. Now I'm sitting at a table, everyone's wearing a $100,000 watch. Nobody gives a fuck. Mm. It's just like the, there's levels to the mm. game. And when you get up to the top, you realize there's money everywhere. Mm. The abundance mindset, there are so many rich people. So if you're mm. not where you want to be financially, I hope this pisses you off because mm. I'm telling you to annoy you that you're sitting there struggling to pay your bills. There are people out there making so much money you couldn't possibly fathom who have anything they want all of the time. And you may sit there and go, oh, but they're miserable. A lot of them aren't, trust me, they're having a great time. So you need to make a bunch more money because there's money everywhere. Think of the harshest lesson, you don't even have to say what it is, but think of the harshest lesson you've had in the last few years and think of how many times you had the easy way to learn that lesson. You could have just stopped being a dickhead before it got bad. Like that. Think how many times you could have just woke up and go, nah. Yeah. But we don't, do we? Nope. We wake up like, ah, we got away with it. It's fine. <laughs> and then bam, you get hit. There's only two ways to learn lessons, hard and harder. If you're, if you're smart, you take it the hard way. Real idiots take it the hardest way. Yeah. But there's no easy way to learn lessons. But when will you stop the work and take a step back? I don't enjoy, want to. I don't want to. I don't bit. want to. No. I, I, that, and that's my competitive advantage. I don't want to do that. The enjoyment for you is the work, not the Completely. Other people are like, oh, I've, I'm here now, so I can now go on holiday. Mm. I can now. I don't want to stop working. I don't want a holiday. Never. I don't want to relax. Is this relaxing? I'm going gonna, gonna to try and relax for the first time in my life. We'll do this here on live in the podcast. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Am I supposed to want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was it? That's like, nice what, is, that, is that it? Is that the dream? Doing nothing. Is that the goal? Like, and if I'm not on my phone, my brain is preoccupied and anxious about what's happening on my phone. So it's better to just be on it. Like, I don't want to relax. I don't want to stop. Ain't no rest for the weekend. No, I don't want, I, do, I don't want to stop. That's why nobody will ever beat me because all these other people, they want to take time out of They're their life. They're working to relax. They're working to relax. Point. I'm at the point now where I would, I'd, I'd look at a beautiful woman and go, I can go on a date with her and she's absolutely gorgeous and perhaps we'll fall in love and it'll be great. But you know what? I'd rather work. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to be off my phone. Yeah. I don't want to date girls. I don't want, I just want to conquer the earth. I don't care about anything else. I know I've only reached 10% of what I can actually do. Let's go, bro. And that bothers me. And no matter how much money I'm making or how most Googled man alive, whatever, whatever, I can still identify the inefficiencies in my systems. I can still identify where more money could have been made. And money isn't that important. But like we said, money is a very simple way to measure success because it's numbers. Numbers are easy. Yeah. This number, that number. It's easy. What does a company do when it wants to measure the success of a company? It looks at the numbers. What does a YouTube channel do? It looks at the numbers. Numbers are easy. So if you're gonna say, how do I be successful in life? Money's not everything, but it's a nice easy way to measure because it's numbers. And then when you understand it's the time and energy of other people, you sit and go, okay, well, I have this large empire now and I have all these people who work for me and all these people I love and all these people I care about and all these children and all this going on and the world is getting more and more messed up and everything's on a decline and everything's being destroyed and a certain number of people are gonna become useless eaters and gonna be eradicated and they're gonna try and lock us all in our 15 minute cities for the climate or some garbage that's coming in no time. How do I combat and fight all of this and protect all the people I care about? Well, I need the time and energy of others. I need an army, so I need money. Mm. So you start waking up saying, okay, one billion is shit. 
Tristan. And he's like, Andrew, we're from a single mother household <laughs> and our company got valued at $1.2 billion and you own 100% of it. No, we need at least 10. And then you start getting, then I get mad. And my stress comes from the fact that I don't have enough. And I said, bro, you see that? And he goes, yeah, what about it? I said, doesn't that piss you off? I was about 16. He goes, why? So this dude has 400 G's for a car, 400 grand. I'm walking four miles to college because my mom hasn't got any car. He has 400 grand. Do you think he works a job? Do you think he's fucking behind a counter somewhere? He knows something about the world that I don't know. Yeah. And they were like, well, he's, he's rich. I'm like, yeah, I know. I didn't say he wasn't rich, dummy. I'm saying he knows something about the world I don't know. And I was intrigued and it angered me. I couldn't sleep for weeks. I was pissed off. Every time I saw somebody with genuine money, I understood that everything I was being told and taught and, 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 and they were trying to make me believe just simply wasn't true. Mm. I was like, this is bullshit. None of these people are getting these things by following the path that the system is trying to make me follow. Yeah. Nobody, and everybody intrinsically knows this. If you go to a, if, if, you, if you're at a BP, you're at a petrol station and I pull up in my Lamborghini, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. Yeah. He studied hard. Right. Do <laughs> they fuck? They're like drug dealer gangster and, and they do that because they know that the, mo the easiest way to amass wealth is to break the rules because the rules are not designed to allow most people most people to make money you can make money within the rules of course you can but most people don't most people who follow the path work consume die that's it yeah so i always knew the same thing as you and i knew there had to be another way i knew that just working for money was a paradigm that that wasn't true and then you understand making your money work for you and you understand delinking your time from money yeah. you start learning to understand these things but eventually you build a system and you build an ecosystem like me i have 60 or 70 people work from for me all around the world and things just happen and money just kind of appears as yeah. long as everything's well organized do you, do you think and and life really doesn't have to be that complicated when you see somebody that has something you want you just got to try and work out how they got it yeah and that's the missing part most people see people with things they want and they don't do the, the second half they don't try and work out how they got that thing oh my man has a ferrari okay I wish I had a Ferrari. Okay. They don't sit there and go for an hour. How did he get a Ferrari? It doesn't cross that. That part is the part they don't want to do, right? They just go, oh, he has a Ferrari. Wish I had a Ferrari. And they go back to TV. Yeah. And that's why they lose. <laughs> if you don't want to buy a jet and you, you don't want to buy a yacht, you're never going to need more than $20 million, really. Because there's nothing to buy. And like, you can rent the yacht and the jets. You can, you can charter yachts. You can charter jets, which is probably smarter anyway. Uh, I had a jet. I owned one for a few months and I sold it. And the reason I'll never buy a jet again. They can track it. They, yeah. All these on Twitter are tracking them. That's Top like, G's jet. I'm yeah. not having it tracked. But no, 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 the LVMH guy, he just, he just sold, he sold it. it. No. Because it, I don't want everyone knowing where I am all the time. Yeah. You can buy a nice house in most places on the planet. You can buy two or three cars. You can buy some diamond watches. You can buy some nice clothes. And that's all there is to buy. Mm. What's actually kind of amazing to me is when I was poor, I thought if I got rich, I'd buy all this stuff. And now I'm rich and I can buy anything I want. And there's nothing to buy. There's nothing to buy. Clothes, I already have too many. My wardrobe's completely full head to toe. Don't wear most of them. Diamond watches, you get 10. How many do you really need? Cars, I have 28. I drive like four of them. Like, what's there to buy? Coffee, dinner. Yeah, true. There's nothing to buy. Like, it's, so the money is just about influence and power. That's mm -hmm. all it's about. All I know, what I will state as a matter of fact, is this world is hyper competitive, especially as a man. Mm -hmm. Most men are walking through life and they don't realize that it's constant competition. And this is my point. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. I, you can be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want and I want the girl you want and I want the status you want and the car you want and the house you want. And I'm gonna get it and you're fucking not. You're playing a game and it's a competitive game and you mm. need to build a mindset that allows you to be ultra competitive. And if you wanna sit there and say, no, I want a non-competitive mindset, then fine. You know what you call people who do not win competitions? Losers. Correct. Yeah, I, had, I think I had the best possible upbringing a person can have, which is good parents and no money. I didn't get famous or rich young, which I also thank the, the Lord for. I think a, a lot of these people who get famous online quite early, I think they miss out a lot of life. It's uh, not real life. It's not real life. It's not real life. No, I had real jobs and I did real things and I was really broke and I was really on the bus and really trying to pay rent and doing real stuff for a long time. I always say I'm not rich. I'm a poor man with a lot of money. I always used to say that, and I don't want to brag or anything, but just because I get asked this question a lot, I've been extremely successful. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. In fact, I think our last valuation across everything we own was we're almost at B now. So we're doing very, very, yeah. I'm a, I'm a billionaire, Top G's a billionaire. So we're doing extremely well. That's the first thing. The second thing, it's actually 
it's great that you say that because I completely agree. Because if you're born with everything, if you're born with all this money, that you have no aspiration, nothing to actually to cra- grasp onto and trying to achieve, then money doesn't make you happy. But then you can analyze this from another angle, right? We were just talking earlier. We can always pivot back to who the matrix are, who's in charge. So let me ask you. Do you, you have somebody? That well, you... well, let me ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. If you're born into a dynasty, let's say a banking dynasty, and you're born a billionaire, and you have everything you've ever wanted ever, and money has absolutely no value at all, mm. and a brand new Ferrari doesn't mean a thing. You could buy one every 10 minutes for the rest of your life, and money doesn't make you happy. What's the one thing that's going to make you happy? Controlling others. Controlling others. Power. Yeah. Ego. So then you sit there and start looking at things. Because going, games become real. Absolutely. Yeah. So now you're like, okay, well, money doesn't satisfy me. What makes me feel important? Especially if you're going to add in. Let's add in another angle to it. Let's imagine you falsely believe, because it is falsely, that you're somehow genetically better than others. You're from this lineage. You're better than the other people. And the other people, the serfs and peasants are struggling for money and you have unlimited money because you're so smart and your family's always been so smart. You'll have haughty eyes. Yeah. So then you're going to sit there and go, well, why did they make people put on a mask when they walked in the restaurant and take the mask off to eat and then put it on to go to the toilet and then take it off to eat and then put it back on... Because I have, I have a, I have a I'll tell you why, because it's funny. You think it's just people. because it's funny? Because it's an ego. Because it's ego. I thought it power. was a test to see how far they could push something. Compliance tests. Yeah. Which is the same thing. So when you really understand the people who are in charge of the world are completely, like you said, broken. There are broken people. Money can't satisfy them. People said, uh, I keep referencing COVID, and I do that because it was something tangible that everybody lived through. That's a very easy one well, to they, reference. It's, it, this is actually, it, it's a bad thing that could work in your favor because now they could relate to you. Yeah. If you're, if you're in a gas station and it's three in the morning and, and a Lambo pulls up and a guy gets out of it, you're thinking criminal, drug dealer, gangster. Yeah. You're not thinking, ah, he has a uni degree. Because you you know, you're not going to think that. So when you see money, people don't even associate the money they see with university. But then they go, I want to make money. So in a university, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So I think everybody knows that the system and the path they lay out for you is not a a path that's going to lead to where you want to be. Mm. And I didn't know what the other path was, but that intrinsic distrust for the system and that distrust for the things they wanted me to do made me search for other avenues. And then I found them. Right. And if you speak to the people who are richest, if you speak to the people, you know, this is for everyone at home as well. If you speak to the people, you know, who have the most money and go up to them and say, hey, what made you rich? None of them say school. Do any of them say school made me rich? (laughs) I got an A in GCSE. Like, who gives a shit? It's it's bullshit, right? So it's all indoctrination. So I I knew it was indoctrination. And for that reason, I was always searching. And if you're searching, you're going to find. Yeah. So the average people come to me and say, what do I do? I'm just the average guy. And my only answer is stop being the average guy. It's my only answer. You can't just be the average guy anymore. The, the idea from the 1950s that you can just be the normal, average, law-abiding, hard-working citizen and you'll have a good life is gone. Any man out here who goes, I'm just going to work hard, do my bit, and obey the laws, and I'll have a good life. No, you won't. No, you will not. Just doing your job is never going to make you rich because you're just going to be taxed into infinity and you're going to stay broke. So just obeying laws and doing your job now has set you up for, to be a peon and a slave for eternity. You have to get yourself in a position where you're making enough money that I'm not saying laws can be broken, but there's, there certainly can be bent. I mean, I think you know this with accountancy and, and the way that tax laws work. You get to a certain level where it's like, okay, yeah, let, we can just put that one to the yeah. side. On, we can on, twist that one around. Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, says, break the rules, but don't break the law. Completely. Yeah. And that's basically it, right? So you get to a certain level and that's where it's really interesting because the, the average peon, their, their answer to all this is, well, we need to tax the rich. Because they don't understand how money works. They don't understand how the world works. And they think that rich people are out here working some kind of job that you can tax. Yeah. I've spoken to dudes and like, yeah, you know, I had a bad couple months. Why? Oh, my girl left me. You've wasted months? You've wasted months over some <laughs> Like you had, you had the, think of how much God loves you to have given you the, the grace and given you the opportunity to waste months of human time over some chick. Like, talk about blessed head to toe. If I waste months, empires are going to collapse. I'm going to end up in a cell or dead if I waste months. I have things to do every single day. day. I can't waste a second. Like, these people are just absolutely infinitely blessed. And their mindset is a product of that because they're they're spoiled children. 
absolutely spoiled children. If you're going through life with any other mindset besides a hyper competitive one, where you're capable of competing with some of the most dangerous men on the planet in all their forms, me and my network, and also my competitors. Mm. If you don't have that mindset, then you have to understand that you are spoiled. Yeah. You're spoiled by your reality. I believe there's only three reasons people are not rich. One of three reasons. They're either stupid, arrogant, or lazy. Stupid is actually the smallest category. Mm. People think, oh, you know, there's a lot of stupid people. There are, but I know a lot of stupid people with a lot of money, right? There's so much money in the mm. world. To be too stupid to generate money, I think is less than 5% of the population who are really? genuinely too mm. dumb to ever make a good wage. Then you have arrogant and lazy, and these are the two most common. Lazy because people just, oh, you know, but I need time to myself. Oh, you know, but it's the evening. Or, you know, it's hyper competitive. There are people who do not need times to themselves. There are people, there's an Indian in Islam, or there's a guy in Islamabad who'll do your job online for $3 an hour and he doesn't sleep. Mm. You're, you're gonna lose, right? So if you're gonna be lazy in any regard, you have to understand there are people like me who are billionaires who work 18 hours a day. When I finish this, I get into my car and I open my laptop and I work on my way to my next appointment and then I'm gonna work all night until the day I go. When I go to sleep, I close my laptop and I'm asleep a minute later. I work, that's all I do. So. Oh. Lazy is a big problem because people go, oh, but I just want to relax. If you just want to relax, that's fine. Mm. But you're competing against people who just don't want to relax and you're going to lose. And the last, and I'd say that's around, a lot of people have that element to them. A lot of people are lazy. That's about 50% of people. But the main reason people are not rich is because they are arrogant. 50% of people are brutally arrogant. And I'll give you an example. I have a school where I teach people how to make money online. It's called The Real World. It was called Hustlers University. It's now called The Real World. TheRealWorld.ai. You can see it at CobraTake.com. I sit here as a billionaire and I sit and say, I will teach you how to make money online. Anybody, 18 Modern Wealth Creation Methods. It's $49 a month and I will teach you. And people will sit there in their brutal arrogance and as a brokey with no money and go, yeah, but can he really teach me? I have everything you've ever fucking dreamed of. I have all the money, you have nothing, and you're so arrogant that you believe you know more than me or that you can do it without me or that I don't know how to teach you. The arrogance of people is truly mind bending. If you know so much, why are you broke? You obviously don't know. If I want to learn how to box, I wouldn't walk into a boxing gym, find a guy who can box and go, yeah, you know, not bad, but can he really punch? Like this is how people think when it comes to money. You guys are all successful enough. You can sit there and say, look, I do X, Y, Z. I have X, Y, Z. You don't have it. So do you, do you want to learn how to play piano from the piano teacher? Or do you want to sit there as an arrogant brokey? Most people are brutally arrogant and you can sit there and you can try and help them. And they're just so arrogant. They think, oh, I can do it myself or I'll work it out myself. I don't need help. And it's arrogance and it keeps them at the bottom. Everything great that's happened to me in my life, someone taught me. I had a kickboxing coach. My dad was my chess coach. You get taught things. To sit there and think you're too, air, you're too good to learn. Well, this is the problem. Most people are broke. Hmm. Most people are broke because they're arrogant, bro. It's the truth. It's nothing to do with how stupid they are. They're just arrogant people. You know what's a fantastic motivator for men? Shame. I'm telling you now, it works. Shame. If, I, if I'm around my house and someone was getting fat and all of us were to go, you're a fat fuck. What are you eating that for? I guarantee they'd train. Shame works with men. And you talk about this, and this is the reason I promote brotherhood. The reason I am the man I am is not just because I'm so fantastic. It's because I even now to this day live with six men. I live with my fight coach. I live with my brother. I live with some of my old friends I've had for 20 years. We live in this big ass compound, this huge house. If I wake up and my brother's been training an hour and a half, I feel so annoyed and angry and guilty that I have to go and beat him now. So that competitiveness keeps us constantly at edge. People say me and Tristan, me and Tristan are best friends and our brotherhood is fantastic, but it is based on competitiveness, but we don't compete against each other. We compete to prove to each other we're a good teammate in the battle against the matrix. How do you get there? How, Cause I've seen a lot of men get torn up by that. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get to a healthy way where we're competitive, but it's not going to destroy our relationship? Well, you have to understand that there's enough outside enemies. You have to put your ego aside and say, look, there's enough people who already want me dead. We're the same blood. Can't we at least unite against all the people who want me dead? I want you, I'm in competition with you, Tristan. I want you, I want to beat you to prove to you I'm a fantastic teammate to you. As opposed to I wanna beat you because I don't like you. And it's a different mentality and we'll sit there and my brother and I are in constant endless competition but it keeps us sharp. So masculine competition is super important which is why it's the third thing I teach which is brotherhood. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. If you find some guys who have their game right, your game's gonna get straight. It's as simple as that. And I think if you take any man on the planet in any situation, in any scenario, and you tell him to become as strong as possible because of all the lessons he's gonna learn, become as rich as possible because of all the lessons he's gonna learn, plus obviously being strong and rich are, are benefits, 
plus find a network of brotherhood of men who are accountable to themselves and by extension accountable to you. If you're accountable to yourself as a man, you're also accountable for your friends. I don't want loser friends. I don't want dickhead friends. If I had a guy I really liked and he started being a dickhead, I'd try very hard to fix him. And if I couldn't fix him, I wouldn't be his friend anymore. I'd say, stop that. We don't do that. Why are you doing that? What are you crying about again? Why are you acting that way? Come on, let's go train. I don't want to train. But we always train. Come on, let's go. And then after a while, I'd be like, he doesn't train anymore. Get him out. Bye. Go, go, go get eaten by wolves. That's the unfortunate reality of the world because I'm just some of the five people I spend the most time with. I don't want to wake up one day feeling terrible and going, ah, oh, but he's missing the day and I might miss the day. He'll, his poison will get in my brain. I have to resist it. So if you get a brotherhood, masculine brotherhood, and you're accountable for yourself and for them, you're going to be able to do nearly anything. People will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, that's a scam. Or I don't work hard. I work smart. Bollocks. More, more cover. For just anything it takes to say, do you I don't want to work. Do you believe in that? Work smart or not harder? I believe in both. Yeah. But there's a time when it comes to work smart. And most people are trying to do the smart work before they do the hard work. It's kind of like talent, right? You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting the car. I'm going to another meeting. Work. I'm going to fuck a bitch. That's work. She's going to be on my arm at the fucking can on the, at the film festival. That's more credibility. I consider it work to fuck her. That's work. <laughs> I'm going to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. And we talked earlier about speed. Most people go that, you know, it's only two weeks. It's only a week. It's only a week. The people who say it's only a week are the people who are broke. They don't value time. That's the reason you're all poor because you say it's only a week. So, oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it later. It's only an hour. It's only a day. It's only a minute. You are competing against people like me. We do not waste a second. Being a normal man or an average Joe is always going to suck. The only way to have a good life as a man is to be exceptional in some fields. Here is how you do it. Yeah. You need to work your ass off. They delete me. They want men to stay depressed, semi-depressed, miserable, paying the taxes, just rich enough to pay tax, too broke to do anything else. Yeah. And that's, what they want. that's where they want you. So they don't care about men's mental health either. They don't care how many men kill themselves. They don't give a shit. And this is why I talk about the matrix. People say, why do you talk about the matrix all the time? And I say, there are people who are living right now in a computer controlled, the computer generated reality. If you believe everything you're watching on the news, you are believing a complete false version of reality. And the idea of that reality is to keep your brain occupied enough so that you'll continue to do a shit job for shit wages and pay your taxes mm. until you die. That's exactly the, that's the plot of the Matrix movie. They're yep. abusing your body and controlling your mind so that your body will sit there and do what they need it to do mm. until you're no longer useful anymore. And that's exactly what's happening. And, and another th question I get is people ask me why I'm so interested in this fight against the Matrix. And I, I try and explain to people that I believe this fight cannot be avoided. I think you're either combating the Matrix and fighting against the garbage they're telling you, or you're believing it. And if you believe it, then you end up fighting against yourself. You end up fighting against your own mind. You can't avoid the battle. If you're a full grown man and you believe everything that's on the news, you're going to end up fucking semi depressed, divorced, miserable, broke. Like your, your life's shit anyway. There's no way to escape this fight. You're either buying their crap and fighting against your mind or you're fighting against their crap. There's no, there's no other way to do it. I've never met somebody with a fantastic life who did not completely and utterly believe in themselves. I've never seen somebody massively succeed and they didn't believe in themselves ever. I've never seen somebody who just allows life to happen to them and become blown off course by some sadness end up doing massively monumental and important things. I've mm. never seen it. And if she leaves me afterwards, let's say she just you likes have, to leave men, more. I don't care. Yeah. I'm still working. You're still crying.
You can't possibly ever beat me. I will inti- I'll continue to beat you into eternity, yeah. as will my bloodline. You will sit and pay the price for the rest of your human years. Even your ancestors above you are disappointed in you, and your offspring for the rest of your lineage will look up and say, my great-great-great-grandfather was a loser because I broke his heart, and now we've been broke ever since. Yeah. Chess and fighting are remarkably similar. Very. You have to know what your next move is going to be countering his next move. And there's no luck. If you lose, you made a mistake. There's no such thing as a lucky punch. If, if I'm losing a fight or if I'm beating some guy up and he hits me with one shot and knocks me out and people go, that's a lucky punch. He's trained his whole life to punch people in the face and he punched me in the face. You call that lucky? I call that good. I think it was a very good punch. Excellent. Probably his best punch of his career. No such thing as lucky punches. Same thing with chess. If and you also lose, you left your guard down. Absolutely. It's my fault. Same thing with chess. Brutal self-accountability. If you lose, you made a mistake somewhere. How do you learn that? You have to go back, reflect. You have to watch the game back, play the game back. Where did I make the mistake? You don't blame your opponent. You blame yourself always in chess. It's self-accountability. So when I stopped playing professional chess, I decided to move over to fighting because they're very similar. It's one-on-one. It's not a team sport. So that's why I chose to fight. But I never considered fighting fun. I never took it as ha, 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 this is fun. I was out to hurt people for real. Firstly, let me tell you something about myself and most rich people. We don't own anything. I don't own anything. I don't own anything. There may be a trust fund in Ecuador that owns a company in Singapore that might own a yacht that I can borrow, for, for example. But I don't own shit. So <laughs> that's the first thing. The second thing, you have all these different jurisdictions around the world. It's extremely complicated. How are you going to tax a rich guy? He has houses here, houses there, company here, company there. All the companies making a loss. Does Starbucks pay tax? No, that Starbucks supposedly doesn't make money. Supposedly Uber's never made profit. An app on the phone with millions of cars around the world and people working endless hours for them and them getting a cut of it to run an app. Supposedly they never made profit, never paid a penny tax. Funny how that works. You can't tax the rich. It's too complicated. You can't tax the rich. It doesn't work. All you're going to do is just drive them into other countries. If England right now today were to announce a huge tax on the rich, the rich people would just go, oh, cool, cool. I'll base my company out of Belize. Mm. Two pieces of paper. <laughs> Fuck you. We don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's, and don't, and don't be done with it. So you need to, you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to a a degree, some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So yeah, business studies, you're right. The book, that's, that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to, you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. The problem with owning something is that it can be taken from you. So let's look at it the American way. In America, litigation is a big problem. Everyone gets sued all the time. So you don't want to own anything because if you get sued, then you're going to have to pay that debt and you might have to sell your assets to pay that debt. Not if it's a company though, if it's a limited company. Correct. This is the point. So yeah. People don't own anything themselves. Okay, so they don't think it's, 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 in a, it's a limited company owns it, yeah, a trust yeah, yeah, owns yeah, it. Exactly. So you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the Panama Papers. Yeah. Look at it. And, and then it gets really complicated. And this is what I'm saying where the average Joe Schmo at home has no idea exactly. how this stuff yeah, works. Yeah. Because let's look at Nike, for example. Nike doesn't, pay no, Nike doesn't pay any tax. Why does not Nike not pay tax? Well, I'll give you a very simple version. They have two companies. One set up in Belize with a 1% tax rate. One set up in Europe. The one set up in Europe sells Nike trainers, pays all the staff, pays the stores, sells all the shoes, makes all the money, blah, 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 makes millions and millions and millions in profit. The one in Belize owns the trademark. So after 100 million, 200 million, whatever it is, comes into the European company, the European company has a debt to Belize to use the trademark of mm. all the profit. Yeah. Isn't that coincidental? Yeah, right. That goes to Belize. Then Belize government comes along and goes, give us 1%, nothing. Boom, boom, done, tax paid. It's all a scam. It's all a lie. It's all a scam. The person who get fucked, it's always the same. It's the guy in the middle. 
Yeah. The guy in the middle is going to get wrecked. It makes me laugh when they talk about, we're going to increase taxes, da, da, da. When they talk about increases taxes, they're not trying to chase down the billionaire on his yacht because they can't. They're trying to chase down the guy with an address who can't move, can't leave. He has a mortgage debt, two kids and a dog living somewhere in Sunderland and he's stuck there. I walk in a gas station, put a mask on. No, I won't serve you. Okay, is the gas free? Mm -hmm. Cause I filled up. So you're gonna mm -hmm. take my money or I'm gonna have free gas? Mm -hmm. No, you have to pay. Well then fucking serve me, dummy. Yeah. Put a mask on. No, it's just some stupid thing. Mm -hmm. In the end, they take my money. It was a big waste of everybody's time. Mm -hmm. And I'd say to them, bro, you're earning 700 pounds a month working mm -hmm. for a corporation that wouldn't give a fuck about you if you got stage five cancer. Why do you care? Mm -hmm. If I lived, if I worked in BP and someone walked into my gas station and decided to start a fire in the corner mm -hmm. and barbecue some sausages, I wouldn't give up. I'd be like, please stop, bro. Uh, whatever. Like, why do these people, they're so fervently passionate about yeah. the rules of the BP station. But do like, we need people? You're a fucking people. slave in your mind. Do we need slaves though? Because yes, obviously we, we need people to work and do those jobs that obviously the free people can't do. And this is the full circle realization mm. when you get to the point where as frustrating as it was, you need this mm. slave class of people who buy bullshit so that I don't have to do bullshit stuff, which mm. is great. Mm. But usually the bullshit people can't tell me what to do. It's only during mm. COVID they, they, they were allowed and now that's all over. They can't tell mm. what to do anymore, so it's fine. But if you're, a, and not everybody's mind can be free because in society mm. it would break down. But of course, some people's minds are designed for freedom and some people's aren't. But it's amazing when you're talking to the slave mind, trying to get through to them. You have two choices. Either you understand what's happening in the world today and you're on the side of good and you're fighting against the matrix, or you've accepted all the matrix programming to pretend that there is no battle. And then by extension, you're gonna end up fighting against your own mind. Yeah. And you're gonna be in a fight either way. Your mind's either right and you're fighting externally against the enemy, or you've accepted the matrix programming and you're sitting there fighting against your own depression, your own anxiety, no fighting against your own struggles inside of yourself. You're going to fight anyway. There is no way to avoid this. So you have to make a decision. Do you wanna have control of your own mind and control of yourself and fight for God and fight on the side of good against evil? Or do you wanna accept the evil programming, fall down a, a hole of degeneracy and fight against yourself and self-destruct and implode? That's your choice to make. But yeah. I think the intelligent choice is to fight, against, well to fight against evil. But also, you know, life teaches you a lot. And I think a lot of people are not very self-reflective of their own lives. I don't think, you can read a book and that's great, but I think if you're living an interesting life, if you were to take half an hour a day to actually sit and go, okay, what good has happened to me today? And mm. what bad has happened to me today? Why have those things happened? And how can I prevent them from happening again? Mm. Most people don't, that kind of crap doesn't even cross their minds. Mm. Like every day I will sit at the end of the day and go, what bad has happened to me today? How, how did that happen? Did I get caught slipping on the, was I on the street and some guys come up to me and I was, uh, it could have been a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Like how could I genuinely have improved my reality? And you can self-reflect and teach yourself mm -hmm. everything. But well, that's total don't... ownership of your life, isn't you, it? But you have to have. Mm. But a lot you, of people don't. You have to have ownership of everything good that's ever happened to you and everything bad that's ever happened to you. I have complete ownership for the fact I was canceled. I don't sit there and go, oh, they're lying about me. Yes, they're lying, but I still own it completely. They're mm. lying about me and they're talking shit, but I own it mm. and I took responsibility for it. And I sat there and I took absolute accountability and I thought, okay, how can I turn this in my favor? And I beat them. If I'm walking down the street and it starts to rain, I take responsibility for that. I didn't have to be in rainy London. I could have been somewhere else. I could have brought an umbrella, mm. could have took a car. Yeah. I am responsible for getting wet in the rain. And there's people out here who just don't take any responsibility for their own actions, let alone mm. the weather. You, if you take complete self accountability and you self reflect, you can learn a whole bunch about but life. Could you not just say that it's raining? This is unfortunate. No, but that's, that's what losers do. Mm. It's raining. I'm unlucky. I, I you got told. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, but, no, but that's what they'll say. I got wet because it rained, not my fault. Whereas I'll say I got wet because I did not prepare for the rain. As the world gets more messed up, which it is, people are going to learn some very abrasive, harsh lessons. And sometimes when you've gone through a very harsh lesson, to be given a solution which isn't harsh, you're not going to believe it. To be given a harsh solution makes you feel like, okay, this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. As a man, your life is supposed to be shit. My argument to this is people go, oh, I don't feel good. I say, good. Your life as a man is going to be terrible the entire time. Who told you at any point? I don't know what the Bible says. I haven't read it cover to cover like I've read the Quran. But I don't think the Bible says you're supposed to be happy all of the time. I think follow your passion is also a ter terrible piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. The, people say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy. 
that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and then you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail. Because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. It's called a job, right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? Do you think he's sitting there stroking it at night, <laughs> naked in bed? Fuck no. It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I will dig that hole with passion for the cash. Because yeah, you know the cash For the money. Yeah. That's right. So when people come along and say, oh, you need to find something you're passionate about, follow your passion. Bro, you're going to follow your passion to the fucking food bank. You're never going to make any money that way. You have to sit there and go, what is going to pay me? It's not about detaching yourself from your emotions. I, I feel every single emotion. It's just about so using, them all, it's using them all in a positive direction. Yeah. If I feel extremely happy and excited, I'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard. If I feel absolutely depressed and distraught, I'm going to use that as endless energy and just motivation to do amazing things and work hard. It doesn't matter what you give me. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted transferred. and yeah. transferred. It doesn't matter what fuel you give me. If you give me diesel, petrol, kerosene, Scene, vodka doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine hard work is going to come out absolutely success. that's all i know how to do yeah. that's all i know how to do it doesn't matter what fuel you put in my engine my engine only knows how to do one thing and that is succeed that is only that's all i know how to do yeah so it, it, it doesn't matter what you feed me with i'm going to be massively successful regardless when i was broke when i was on a council estate in luton i thought everyone was poor and now that i have money it kind of feels like everyone's rich. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I go to buy a plane and they're like, no, I'm sold out. I thought you fucking sold out of planes? <laughs> I go to buy a Bugatti and they're like, sold out. I'm like, every, all the shit. Who are these people? Yeah, everyone's bought everything. Like, yeah. And it's crazy uh, the how, how many people out there have such ridiculous sums of money, truly ridiculous sums of money. Uh, there are so many rich people in the world and it's kind of like your, your, your reality is based on you're, it's the matrix, right? If you're broke, everyone's broke. If you're rich, everyone's rich. And, yeah, and I, a lot of people have this separation. I was lucky to live in both worlds, but a lot of people yeah, have this separation. Yeah. So I've had this conversation with a bunch of people and my basic premise is that I refuse to believe in things that take power away from me. Mm. If, if you are in a haunted house and you believe in ghosts, you're scared of the haunted house. If you're in a haunted house and you don't believe in ghosts, you're just in a house mm. and you don't care. So mm. I don't like the idea when someone explains to me the idea of one day waking up and being miserable and not wanting to live anymore and it's nothing to do with my circumstances and I have no power over it and no matter how good my life is, I'm still gonna feel terrible and I'm gonna wanna die. That's not an idea I subscribe to. That's not a reality I'm ever gonna but want But that's a myself. reactive depression, isn't it? You can't be reactive depressed for the day, for example, feeling for a while, feeling, even chronically. You know? Feeling yeah. depressed mm. is real. Yeah. Mm. Depression as a disease I do not subscribe to. The idea, I believe, that if you feel depressed, something is depressing you, mm -hmm. and you should try your best to fix it. You should take control of your life and do your best to fix it. The idea, yeah. but they don't say that. They don't talk that. They say depression like it's this magic thing that comes out the sky mm -hmm. and it gets in your brain. And you're sad no matter what, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you need to only take pills. And I think that's a very bad way to look at the world, and that's a bad idea to subscribe to. And if you start to feel depressed, let's say your girl leaves you and you start to feel depressed, mm -hmm but you believe in the idea of depression, you're now gonna start diagnosing yourself as clinically depressed, yeah. self-hypnosing yourself into hypnotizing yourself into being clinically depressed. And, and it's amazing how you can speak things into existence. Mm -hmm. I cannot become depressed because I don't believe in it. I think we're here to struggle and to learn. I don't think we're here to be happy. That's why when we keep going back to the happy argument, I've always found that kind of frustrating and annoying. Yeah. And someone goes, oh, but I wanna be happy, why? Why? Like, I, why do you want to sit there and laugh? Like, like you you were happy your entire childhood. That's your happy days. You're allowed to be happy as That's a kid. It. It's all over now, right? You you're a man. You have responsibilities. I think we're here to do important. Provide, protect. Yeah, protect, provide, provide, protect, and we're also here to do important things. And important things are going to be difficult, and they're going to be hard, and you're going to get frustrated. But that's what gives you purpose. Yeah. I don't see anyone who's chasing happiness. I think that's a very feminine frame. I understand why some women just want to be happy. I think I don't know the how it feels to be a girl because I'm not one. But no. in my experience, I know women who just want to be happy. Yeah. Girls just want to have fun. They're Fine. Have but fun. you're a man, right? And if you're a man, then it's absolutely not a different experience of life. I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to 
endure pain. Yeah. I think we're here to just see how hard we are to kill. I yeah. think that going through terrible things and living through them and, mm. and coming out the other side is one of the most fantastic things about being human. Uh, I think that it's, it's almost like once you understand what life is really about, there's no emotion which isn't enjoyable. The only emotion that, the only emotional state which can be seen as detrimental is feeling nothing at all. But if you're sitting at home and you're feeling truly heartbroken, at least you're feeling something, right? Least, and, yeah. and, and I think that's the whole part of being human. I don't, I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. That's, that's so I wake up each day and go, what can I, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Mailed. Just yeah. You just wake up and just say, give me this. Give me that. I want all of it. I need to, yeah. there's an army there. They're really big. We're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. Yeah. You need to go and conquer. That's, that's the purpose of life. I think the world is a violent place. I think there's violence all around us. I think that I view the world in a violent way. And I, I don't mean that in a negative context. I say a lot of things and people take them as negative, but I see them as positive, right? Mm. Like I say I'm an angry person and people imagine me to be like unhappy. Yeah. I'm super happy, but I'm angry. Angry is motivating to me. You can't sleep if you're angry, so you, you better work, right? So I'm an angry guy, but I'm a happy guy. And I see the world as a violent place. I've always seen it as a violent place. If, if, you, if most people look at a tree, they see a beautiful tree, right? If I look at a big, strong, beautiful tree, I think he must have fucked up every other little sapling around him. He, he took all the water, took all the nutrients. He destroyed them all. There was once 20 trees and all 19 are dead. And they got one tree left. The big G. Top G tree. Well, one. Top tree. <laughs> Take. <laughs> That's it. That's violence. <laughs> violence got him there. Right? He destroyed his enemy. That's how he got to the top. You see a beautiful tree. I see violence. You understand? Yeah. And that's the that's the true nature of the universe. You have to learn that you you have to take things from other people. And by taking it, I'm not saying go rob a bank. I'm not saying that. I'm saying com completely the opposite. You can be a philanthropist. I'm taking money from everyone inside of hate you, but I'm changing their lives. It's a good thing. You can take money in a positive way. Most people don't look at the light look at life that way. And when you look at life that way, you need to start identifying one of the things we teach us out of hate you is to identify every single time your money is taken from you. The only thing I will say I don't like about being banned is that you get three lives when you attack powerful people. They first ban you and try and shut you up. Secondly, they'll put you in jail for something you didn't do. And thirdly, mm. they'll kill you. So I've used my first life, which is kind of upsetting when you know that next is going to be some false charges. The two worst ones. Yeah. yeah and and af if you survive the false charges, you just die. Jesus. So it's, that's kind of upsetting. I like to think the people at home know if I ever ended up in jail, a jail cell and the media started printing why that they'd know it's a pure lie a and pure it, lie. they made it up. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of scary. Outside of that, the ban in and of itself has not I don't care, bro. Yeah. I, 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 it's made no yeah. difference to no. my life. You need to get a piece of paper or understand on a scale of one to 10 and say, how stressed do I want to be? How much pressure do I want to feel like I'm under? How much can I take? Mm -hmm. And be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. I wanted this life. This mm -hmm. is exactly what I want. It makes me happy. But there's a whole bunch of people who would not be happy in my position just because of the amount of pressure they're under. Mm -hmm. In my last cancellation, we had press trying to find my mother, family members doxxed. My last 20 ex-girlfriends called and mm. offered a bribe, effectively 100,000 pounds to do a mm. negative story on me. None of them turned. Bank accounts frozen, travel bans, all my social media is deleted, uh, all over the news, national news, I'm evil, press releases in the schools saying that I'm bad for young men and I'm misogynistic. Like most people are not prepared for that level of pressure. Mm. I slept mm. fine. Mm. Most people would be like, whoa, there are death threats. Mm. Like most people can't handle that. I can handle it fine. Most mm. can't. You have to decide what you want to deal with. So when you're setting your expectations, it shouldn't just be about how much money you want to make. It's truly about how stressed and how much pressure do I want to mm. be under. I actually enjoy it. Mm. I'm a warrior. I'd be bored in the other way. Mm. I want people coming for me. Mm. That's what I want. <laughs> but if you don't want that, then, mm. then don't build a life that does that. I think if I were to talk to Tyson or if Tyson were to talk to anybody, he'd say the same thing. He'd say, look, end of the day, even if you're struggling, it's you that's going to have to get up and get the work done and change your life. I think that a lot of the help, which is being purported now by the system, by the matrix, isn't designed to help. I think it's designed to keep people in this state of depression because when you're depressed, you're submissive. You don't care about what happens to you if you're depressed. Depressed people aren't gonna riot against a new law or against COVID tyranny because they're depressed. They're too busy. They're at home and they're sad. Mm. I think that keeping everybody in a, a degree of semi-neutral depression, semi-sad, is good for their ability to control all of us. So when they go on the TV and say, you're depressed, it's a disease, you can't fix it, there's nothing you can do about it, it's not your fault, 
I think they're just trying to reinforce in your mind that you're never going to get better. I think if they really cared, they'd say, like Tyson Fury says, you're depressed, but you can beat this. You can do this. I don't hear them saying that very often. They just sit there and say, everyone's depressed and it's normal. Accept it. And I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I don't think people should sit there and accept that they're sad. Change it. I think only you can change it. That's what I believe. God created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world. And what did I say earlier? I said that you don't learn a lesson or you don't appreciate something without, without pain. Without pain. Mm. So you have to struggle to learn anything. Mm. There's only two ways to learn things, the hard way or the harder way. If you're smart, you can learn the hard way. But in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If, it's, if the lesson's even 85% effective, they'll make the same mistake. It's only when they completely decimate and destroy an element of their life do they sit there and go, oh, Oops, now I get it. No. <laughs> that's how it goes. If you start with a good team, you're going to make it. You're re that's really true. Brother, brotherhood in and of itself is so valuable. If you sit around with 20 people and none of them are lazy and none of them are snakes, you're going to be fine. So you need to have people you can, you can, you know, send, give word. This guy's in charge of this thing. That guy's in charge of this Delegate thing. Delegate people, different roles, different Absolutely. tasks. Absolutely. You got to have a team. You got to have a network. And, and my network is so strong. That's one of the big advantages I have. I have people around me who I can genuinely, seriously trust. Hey, man. Thank you very much for watching this video until its very end. I highly appreciate it. So if you found it useful, don't forget to follow my channel because I already work on the next episode with Elon Musk. And most probably it will come up like in a couple of days. So give me a like, write the comment below, and see you soon. Thank you very much. And yes, don't forget about the second part with Andrew Tate that is also about to come. See you. I, I don't regret absolutely anything. I don't operate in that frame. Uh, I think that it's still people, a lot of people think that this is the end of me and they don't understand this is absolutely not just the beginning. My only concern now is becoming too big. That's my concern. I'm worried about becoming too influential, too big.